Hey, Sarah. Hey, Joshua. Where is my lovely wife? Taking a nap. At this time of the day? Well, I guess she has big plans for tonight. Oh, that's right. Tonight is our first meeting of the Garden Club. Yeah, can it? I get you some lunch? No, no, no. I'll just, I'll just get some leftovers. Thanks, anyway. Hey. Hey, Josh. How you doing? Come on Good. in. What can I do Ooh. for you? Sure. Hi. Hello, Bill. Um, I just, uh... I stopped by to talk to you about leases. Leases? Yeah, you know, the drilling leases wait, on wait, Lot 87. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You want to talk to me about business, our, our business? Yeah. I see. Well, this is kind of a new thing for me. I mean, ever since you bought that bar, you've been kind of the, uh, the phantom of the office. You know uh, what I'm saying? Look, I know it's taking me a little while to get it going, but I'm going to spend a lot more time okay. over there at the office all right, now. All right, all right, all right. Enough said. Tonight's opening night, right? Yeah. You... You're going to be there, right? Well, I would love to be there, but unfortunately, tonight I have to babysit. Tonight is Reva's first meeting with the Garden Club. Oh, well. Yeah, well, that's, that's too bad. Dana. Dana, wait. Come on, Dana, talk to me. Dana, what are you so afraid of? You're getting married. Can we take Tanika if we get if we do it right away? You know, it's wonderful to see a young couple so anxious to become foster parents. I hope you still feel that way after you start your own family. I mean, people think it would be a conflict, but, but I... Will we be able to take Tanika? I'm sorry. All prospective couples have to be married at least a year. Hi, Sam. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for coming. I was afraid you'd never speak to me again. Come on, I wouldn't do that. And last night, I, I felt bad for you. I, I didn't want you to find out that way. I was trying to think of a better way to tell you about seeing Doug. Yeah, but it wouldn't have mattered how I found out. I'd still be worried about you. Worry? Yeah, you don't, you don't deserve that. I mean, uh, you don't want to hang out with some guy who's just using you to get next to Harley. Oh, I wouldn't just abandon a painting. Well, good, because it's ripped. What? Yeah, it's damaged. And the owner wants it fixed, so I need to get in touch with the artist right away. Well, let me see it. It's over there. Rollins is more clever than we thought. There's a good chance that I'm being followed. She'll do anything to cover her tracks. Victor, let's get married. She's slick. Leaving my man Paul to take the rap. I think you're breaking with my bare hands! He's got to find proof to escape from this trap. Be ready, I'm on my way. The Young and the Restless, wilder than ever. What makes you think I'm leaving? Well, it's long overdue and you're carrying a big box. Hopefully with your stuff in it. This is just some stuff Reba Lewis wrote a donated to your store. I was gonna leave it out here for you. Oh, yeah, too tired to carry it in after last night, huh? <laughs> you know how I hate to bother you. Mm. But I'm not going anywhere. Oh. Well, I'm busy. I can't talk to you right now. Oh, yeah? So why'd you come out here in the first place? glad you stopped by. I lost that phone number you gave me right after I called you that one time. <laughs> well, it's just as well. I hate phones. Oh, really? Well, don't you have office hours or an answering machine or something like that? I mean, it's difficult doing business this way, you know. 
Yeah, I know, and I'm sorry. I appreciate your patience. It's just that, uh... Mr. Spaulding must have been pretty upset about the painting. Who, Philip or Alan Michael? Philip. Wasn't this a present for him? Well, it was gonna be his wedding present, if I can get it fixed. Oh, you mean Philip hasn't seen the painting? No. Oh. Well, then, I'd better get it fixed right away, and who... Who brought it in? Well, don't worry about it. When you fix it, you can just return it to me. Hmm. You know, I have a better idea. Why don't I just fix it right here, right now? Here? Well, are you qualified to do that? Of course I am. I wouldn't take a chance on ruining a painting. Okay. Well, there's some junk behind the counter there. You can do it. Great. Boy, Dylan! I'm really glad that you stopped by, so I can get a chance to do this. What are you doing? I'm just taking a picture. Dylan, uh, this is Bruce. Howdy. Mm. Dylan's leaving town, so I wanted to get a picture of him. How's the repair coming? Um, it's finished. Oh, great. Yeah, I need to wash my hands. Do you have a washroom? Yeah, back there and to the left. What's going on? It's complicated. You know, this thing must be worth a fortune. Can't see why. It's not that great. Gee, you can't even see the people. It's not the point. Okay, well, the, this is all finished. I, oh, God, I'm so sorry. It's, oh, it's okay. What? What? It didn't come out. The film's okay. Well, it might as well be ruined. It is now that you took the thing off. Stupid! I wasn't even thinking. Of course. <sighs> look, look. Let me, let me, let me give you some money to reimburse no, you for the film. No, no, okay. I, no. I insist. I feel awful. Thank That's you. so stupid. Listen, you know, I may be able to make it up to you. I have another painting by this same artist coming in. Would you be interested? You bet I would. Same deal as before. You bet. And. Um, this time, I promise that I'll keep in better touch, okay? Okay. <laughs> See you, Bruce. Okay. This is great. I just trashed your pictures. Yeah, but if he gives me one more of these paintings, I'll just keep it as an investment. Boy, you look happy when you're making money. Now, that's my Harley. Is there any way around the one you delay? I'm afraid not. We have to be careful where we put these children. And it's better for the couple. Most couples feel that it takes at least a year of marriage just to get used to each other. Adding a child into that equation just isn't gonna help. I'm sorry to do that. I didn't mean to hold things up. Yeah, look, we've uh, <clears throat> talked this over and however much we would like to take the baby, we can't, we can't really do it now. We understand, Dr. Bauer. And please, don't worry. You know that Tanika is going to get the best of care here. No, listen, she just, just doesn't need to be fed and diapered. Will, will there be anybody to, to play with her, to talk to her? We have volunteers who come in and spend several hours a week. Will they be the same person, or will it be just stranger? Well, well, we try to rotate the assignments every few weeks. I mean, you have to strike a balance between giving the child familiarity and creating a harmful bond. A harmful bond? Imagine the effect on the child if it bonds with someone cares about them, and then loses them. I mean, that's happened to most of these children here already. Oh, so the idea is to get close, but not too close. They do know and feel genuine love. We try to keep that feeling around them at all times. Let's just say that the, um, the messenger has to change. Are the published visiting hours the only time someone can come? Well, we prefer that, but, um, but if it's not possible, then we can make other arrangements, yeah. That's good. Can she keep her toys? Yeah. I mean, we, we've bought her some things that we would like to have. It's this little thing with the dangly things on it. She likes to chew on it and... She can keep it. Now, would you all like a moment just to say goodbye to her? Hi, can you send Tanika up? Thanks. Yeah. I just saw Dana. She's here. 
Are you sure? Yeah, I, I tried to talk to her, and she uh, she ran away from me and locked herself behind a door. Excuse me, is this is this someone in the home? Yeah, uh, Dana, she's a former patient of mine. It's very important that I get a chance to talk to her. I don't remember any Dana on staff. Uh, she's she's about uh, this tall, shoulder length, brown hair, young. Oh, maybe she's one of the volunteers. Oh, uh, how how could I find out? Mm, boy, they come and go. Uh... But, you know, my administrative assistant is in charge of the volunteers, and he'll be here after 4 o'clock. Hi, sweetie. Say goodbye now. You're so okay. beautiful, don't you cry? Yeah, and we're gonna see you as often as they'll let us, okay? That's right. Must have broken your mama's heart to say goodbye to you, but I think she was just trying to help yeah, me. And she knew we'd love you. It's time. Can't we? It's time for Tanika to get settled in here. Uh -huh. We love you. We know that. Kiss her. Come here. We know that you're special. have, but since you did, maybe I'll just yeah, have Yeah, Josh is right. Uh, we don't want you waiting on us. I wouldn't do it if I didn't mm. feel like it. Mm. Now, let's mm. see. Mm. Let's mm. just mm. move this a little bit. Oh! I I'm sure. hope I'm sure. I, I didn't got... mess that up. No, you, you never okay. mess up, Sarah. What is this? That's Reva's new dress for tonight. Reva's going to wear this to the garden club? Somehow it doesn't look right, does no, it? No, it does. I mean, it's very nice, but uh, I... But I, it just doesn't seem like Reva's taste, do you think? Well, I agree with Josh. I think it's very nice. For a garden club? Yeah, I think it's a little formal, but... Uh, if it makes her comfortable, I guess that's the most important thing, isn't it? I suppose. Hmm. Thing, how are you, huh? Hey, uh, thank you. Yeah, I got her. I got her. Thank you. Did you enjoy riding in that great big car, huh? Huh? I got, I got the back seat all to myself. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, hi, Uncle Billy. How you doing, sweet pea? Did you have a good day at day camp? <laughs> we went to the park and we went swimming. I put my face in the water two times. Oh, well, good for you, honey. Did you have your lunch? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I guess it's, uh, nap time? Uh-huh. Well, it is nap time, isn't it? Uh-huh. Come on. I know it's a drag, but you'll play a lot better. You'll feel a lot better if you get a little sleep now. Can you give me a ride upstairs? It's what I live for, sweetheart. <laughs> it's why I came home from work, as a matter of fact. You ready? You know something about that dress, boy? Well, I agree with Josh. I think it looks real nice. What are you and Reva cooking up? You know better than to send something like that for our garden club meeting. Oh, come on, sir. We're just trying to shake him up over there, that's all. What are you trying to shake? Sarah, it's harmless, it's moral, it's legal. And besides that, it's just, just one whole bunch of fun. Now, how many things can you say that about in this world? Don't you dare mess things up for her, Billy. She is happy here with Joshua. Everything is right. Is it? I, I just figure Reva needs a little something. Nothing that you can give her. All she needs to do is forget. Forget, wait a minute, forget what? Well, all the bad things. No, 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 wait a minute, Sarah. You were thinking of something, something specific. Lord, Reba's had enough trouble in her life. Yeah, but there is something that's eating away at her, isn't there? Come on, Sarah, you may not like it, but I know Reba. And I've seen it ever since I came back. Now, what is it? I guess maybe I, I really don't know Reba as well as I thought. Because you see, Sarah, I 
can't figure this one out. Well, then let it alone. It is not your problem. Hold on a minute. I love Josh. I love Reva. But then let it be, please. Well, it took a little bit of negotiating. I don't think we're going to get a nap out of her, but she did agree to sit quietly with a picture book. What's going on? Oh, I was just uh, getting Sarah's opinion on decorating. You know, she's been doing a little comparative bar hopping. He came up with some real good ideas. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to hire her away, but uh, she thinks Needlepoint is her calling. Well, who knows, Billy? Maybe I'll get you to hire me as a bouncer. Oh, that's a fearsome thought. Bet you'd keep everybody in line, wouldn't you? Of course. Mm. It's my favorite job. Mm. Well, I guess I better get back to the club. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold it. We didn't finish talking about the leases yet. Hamp needs a lot of help today. What does that have to do with you? You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue loving this family if they're so mean to me. All right, you know, all I'm... right, all right. Cut the sob story. Good luck tonight. I hope you pack them in. Thanks. Sarah? We're not through this yet. Okay, Sarah. What's wrong? And they may find Tamika's real mother, which would be Marie. the best thing for... The girl left her baby on our doorstep. She's obviously not ready to be a mother. Well, then, ultimately, ultimately, this may be the best thing for Tanika. I mean, at least this way she has a shot of getting a family that really wants her. And in the meantime... In the meantime, she'll be well taken care of. Rick, yeah. uh, Dr. Bridges has been looking all over for you. He has the test results on Jim Burns. Okay. Well, you two need to talk, so... I just don't understand giving up a baby. You don't know what our life was like, Maureen. Look, Mom was poor. Mom wasn't a teenager, and no matter how bad it was, she always had the boarding house. Hold on, that's me. Gotta get this other right back. Okay. Hey, you all right? I just hate this. You want to talk? Huh? Yeah, I'll sit over here. Okay. Um, Look, I need to now. talk to Johnny, and you need to talk to Ed, so... No, I don't really have anything to say to Ed. Okay, increase that a little bit. Right now. Yeah. Of course, he obviously wants to reconcile. Obviously? Oh, it's yeah. not obvious to me. I mean, he's going to have to be a lot clearer than that. And it's going to have to be about me, no, not, not about something not else, like a baby. I know what you mean. Okay. What? The reason I'm so delicately trying to talk to Johnny oh, right now is to sort out the very same thing. What are you talking about? No. Johnny proposed to me. What? Maybe. Sort of. Well, we were sitting there in that office, you know, feeling horrible. Then he turns to the counselor and says, what if Chelsea and I get married right away? Can we take Tamika? You are joking! Um, are you leaving? Uh, yes, actually, I, I, I do have to go. I have to get some books oh. at the bookstore. Okay. See you starting. later. Bye. Bye. And I also have to get to company for lunch if I'm going to get well, to the Well, okay, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later then, all right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, listen, you want some company? I mean, I haven't seen you. I'll carry your books, whatever. That'd be great. <clears throat> Two of Guiding Light in a moment. Can you use your phone? You'll be my guest. Thanks. Hello? Yes, uh, this is uh, Dr. Rick Bauer. I'm one of the uh, doctors that worked with your daughter, Dana. Would there be a chance I could see you and your husband today? I don't think I can go home yet. Yeah, I know. It's amazing how quickly your heart will change, isn't it? Yeah. I guess so. You guess so? You were ready to ask me to marry you just to take Tanika. That's pretty intense. Is it? Don't you think that's major? What? Are you saying it actually surprised you? I'm not sure 
what it was. Well, that's the direction we're headed anyway, isn't it? Like a road trip. <laughs> what? I said, I guess, I guess that's the direction we're taking. I'm gonna get going. Hey, 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 how can you just leave like this? Isn't this important to you? Part of the logical road, right? Well, I see it as more than that. I hope so. You hope so? We're talking about getting married. We'll see. We'll see? Johnny, we can't put getting married on a list of things to do, like shopping or something. We definitely can't get married just because of a baby. Hey, a lot of people get married because of a baby. Your order will be right out. Thanks. Look, Sam, I'm sorry I said that. You want to change your order? No, no, that's not what I mean. No, what are you sorry about? Saying that Dylan was using you. It's okay. You meant well by it, and anyway, you were right. Yeah, but see, it's because of the way he is. It has nothing to do I with you. I was a ninny to think that he actually cared about No, me. Sam, he's the ninny, and it's not that somebody wouldn't like you. It's just that you need... You need somebody smart, somebody who's a better person than Dylan. You think that I'm that tough a sell, I have to wait for someone who admires my fine mind? No, I'm... Yes, that's what... I, what I'm saying is, you want the person to care about you, not what you look like. Not that you're... you look bad, I mean, you're pretty, you're very pretty. And when school starts, believe me, there's gonna be a line out Ross's house of guys to take you out. Alan Michael, you don't have to do this. I have no illusions about who or what I am. Well, yes, you do. I mean, if you could be satisfied with Dylan. Look, I, I just don't want you to get hurt. And I know he can do that to you. Because he's hurt one person in this world that I really love. What are you still doing here? There are a million reasons for you to leave, and you stay. There's also reasons for me to stay. Like what? What is it? Why did you come here in the first place? I came here looking for my parents. What? My real ones. See, when my adopted mom died, I started thinking about my real folks a lot. And when I was about nine or so, this letter came to our house. And I heard my dad say it was from Springfield. And he, he hid it, never let me see it. He always acted real funny about it. So I started thinking, that maybe it was from my real folks. And maybe they had a plan to rescue me. Pretty dumb, huh? <laughs> no. But it's probably nothing anyway. That's why I came here. And look what I found. <laughs> I hit it real lucky. Have you, uh, have you seen Dana's parents? Uh, no, not yet. Are you okay? Yes, fine, sure. What's going on? I'm being so silly. I know I am. It's just that, uh, I just got a phone call that Philip and Blake got married last night. You're kidding me. Oh, that must have been why he tried to get a hold of me. I knew it was coming, you know? I, I don't know why I'm like this. Oh, it's Beth, isn't it? I just always thought that Philip and Beth would get married. I mean, that was the way it was supposed to be. It just that I don't want him to be happy. I mean, he should go on. He deserves to be happy, but... Just knowing that he's married to someone else... It, it makes Beth's death so real to me again. They really were happy, weren't they? They loved each other. We should all be so lucky. And Beth and Philip were so special together. You know, sometimes I think Beth was the one that held us all together. I miss her, too. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, we're looking for Dr. Rick Bauer. Oh, Mrs. Jones. Mr. Jones? Yes. I'm Dr. Bauer. Thank you so much for coming in today. Ahead as soon as we could. Do you have any news of Dana? She hasn't been in touch with you. No, no, and no, I really thought she might. She's dealing with so much right now. I just wish she'd call. 
I know it sounds silly. You can miscarry and, and recover and be just fine, but in my mind, I keep seeing Dana sick and pale and all alone. Well, I ran into your daughter today, and she is fine. Where? Uh, at the Children's Center downtown. She's, she's fine. She's perfectly healthy. W what did she say? Well, actually, she didn't say very much. I tried to talk to her, and she ran away. That doesn't surprise you. No. That's Dana's way. Could you tell me something about Dana's friends? Anything? Dana always ran with a wild crowd. It was a constant problem between us. Well, see, that doesn't make any sense, because Sandy and Bart don't seem particularly wild to me at all. She must have met them after she left home. I... I know this is none of my business, but could you tell me how you and your daughter got along? Not very well, I'm afraid. We tried and tried to help her get her life together. We told her to get a decent job, be a secretary, say, join the real world. But she would never listen to us. She just said that she wanted more. Well, so she had ambitions in Sure, her. to be rich and famous. Doing what it boiled down to was that she thought she was too good for us. Oh, now, Ron. When she wasn't putting on airs, she was off with her friends. Staying up all hours of the night, coming home with alcohol on her breath. We thought it would help to become strict with her, to lay some ground rules. I see, and it uh, obviously didn't work. No. Right. When we told her she'd have to abide by our rules if she wanted to live on our ro under our roof, things just got worse. But why would Dana tell me that you were dead? One night, we had to bail her out of jail. She'd been with some friends who had stolen a car. I told her to move out. I'll never forget the look on her face. Dana was always so sensitive. She didn't say anything. She just... She just packed her bags, but... God, the look on her face, the pain and, and the rejection. I, I've had to live with it ever since. I'm sure that was the day she decided we were dead. Well, I'm sure that uh, you both did everything that you could. We always tried to protect Dana, and finally we just felt that we didn't have any choices. I see. So you uh, sent her into the real world? Yeah. But by protecting her, we didn't prepare her for it. I'm really glad that you felt lucky, Don. But seriously, why are you still here? I like it here. That's it? This is none of your business. Look, I, I feel almost comfortable here. I haven't found my family, but this is the closest I've gotten. Why? Why do you say that? Because Daisy's here. I knew and it. And I can put roots down for the first time Dylan, in my life. Daisy is not a part of your family, and you promised me you'd stay away from you her. You want to see her, too. Yes, but I won't. I know that's the worst possible thing for her, so I'm just going to leave her alone. And Dylan... You are going to do the exact same thing. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. But she's going to wonder. That's what you don't understand. You think she's just going to grow up and never give us another thought, right? But I know different. She's going to wonder. She'll get to an age where maybe that's all she'll ever think about. It doesn't have to be the same for her as it was for you. I hope not. I really do. But she is going to wonder, Harley. You know, I still do. Just to walk down the street, I look at all the faces. I think, hey, maybe that's my mom right there. Or maybe that guy's my father. And it kills me to think that she's going to have to go through that. Reva told me what Ma did this morning. Yeah, that was really special, wasn't it? <laughs> Coming in at 6 o'clock in the morning, all full of smiles. Their hand filled with flowers that she just picked from the garden. It was nice. That was so cute, putting a couple on each plate. <laughs> she wanted her mommy to start her day with sunshine. Mm -hmm. And we both know what Reva is like at 6 o'clock in the morning, don't we? Especially before her fifth cup of coffee. Yeah, could she even see the flowers? <laughs> well, I don't think she could focus enough to tell what variety the flowers were, but um, she did say thank you. Mars like you are. All sunshine in the morning. <laughs> I just hope it sticks. You're worried about Reva, aren't you? Oh, Lord, no. Well, Reva's sitting pretty now. Why should I be worried about her? Sarah, 
I know you and I know her. There's something wrong. Why don't you just tell me what it is? Honey, Reva has never been this happy before. Then what is it that's eating her up inside? Well, she's just had a lot of hurt. And she, she just needs to have it loved away. Well, that's what I'm here for, but I'm beginning to get the impression that that's not going to be enough. Well, I don't know. Maybe it just takes time. I mean, Reva hasn't had much experience in being truly happy. Maybe it makes her nervous. Sarah. I really do have to know everything. What? There's something that's holding Reva back. It's something very deep. You think I don't know that? You do know what it is, don't you? Samantha Marler? That's me. Phone call. Thank you. Hello? Oh, hi, Uncle Ross. No, I haven't talked to him. You're kidding. Really? Uh, okay. Oh, uh -huh. yes, Al. Michael's right here. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'll see you there. Okay, bye. You're never so, gonna believe this. What was that all about? They tried to call you last night. They really wanted Where, uh, you to who, be who there. Who tried to call me? Wait a second. Philip and happened? Blake uh -huh. got married. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, they did it on the spur of the moment. And they're having a party at the penthouse tonight. Oh, all right. Of course, we're all expected to go. Okay. I have to get him a present. That's right, so do I. Um, Why don't you just get something at Harley's store? Yeah, right, I wish. Half the stuff in Harley's store is from Philip's attic to begin with. Oh. Wait, <sighs> Polly doesn't know about this. Look, I'll, I'll see you later. I gotta tell her, Wait, okay? Alan Michael, I can do that. I'm going by the diner anyway. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll okay. see you later, okay? Right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you so much for coming. Really, I was afraid I'd lost my best friend. Oh, come on. We wouldn't do that. Oh. Thanks. I'll see you, okay? Okay. I couldn't believe it. I almost did to tell them the books were for my son. Thank you. Oh, you wouldn't have believed you anyway. I wasn't old enough to have a son in college. Oh, come on. If you remember 19, everyone over 30 was old. So what do you think? Is it going to bug you? Uh, you know, being the oldest kid in class? I don't know. Maybe I'll be the mysterious older woman to some young hunk. I'm sorry. What? You probably will be. No, I mean, I didn't mean that. It's just sometimes, you know, things just fly out of my mouth, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm... Come on, come on. There's nothing wrong with wanting to entertain a young hunk. I mean, not that I'm saying that I necessarily want to compete with beefcake, you know? It's just, it's, uh... It's good to see you full of life again. It looks so good on you. Thank you. Oh... <laughs> Mm. Is Bart going to be meeting us? No, I don't think so. He had some work to finish up at the children's home. I'm sorry about the other day. Apology accepted. <laughs> I was afraid you might not call. I don't stay mad, you know that. What about your parents? That's a different story. What's the real reason you don't want to call Dr. Bauer? What's the point? Dana, I saw the way you looked at him. All right. He's kind of cute. You are attracted to him. Well, yeah. But we're from two different worlds. Besides, I know he'd probably kill you. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Yes, but he is violent at times. You've even said that, and he's way too possessive. Still, I love him. And he loves me, too, I think. Love is something you know. <laughs> like you and Bart? You know, there is something that's been bothering me. What's that? When I told him that the doctor who was treating me was Rick Bauer, he demanded that I never see him again. Why? Do you think he knows him? Oh, it's something else, something more, but I can't put my finger on it. Well, maybe he knows that you have a crush on Rick. Maybe. Which makes it even more important that I stay away from Dr. Bauer. I need to talk to you about Dr. Bauer. Right, right. How are you doing, Barth? Good, thanks. What are you doing here? 
I work here. With the children? No, I do volunteer work in the public relations department. I was just uh, finishing up some work on a pamphlet we're going to distribute around Springfield. I see. So how's Dana? I know that uh, she left the hospital with you and Sandy. Yeah, she's doing better every day. Is she here right now? No, I think she's having lunch with Sandy. Well, that's good. That gives us a little time to have a man-to-man -man talk, doesn't it? I'm really not sure what I can tell you. Well, you can start off by telling me why Dana seems to be avoiding me. She's busy. I'm sure it's nothing Bart, personal. come on. It's not that you know it. I just tried to talk to her, and she ran away from me. Why would she do that? <laughs> That's Dana for you. A true Gemini. She's I can't running stay away from something, and I would like to know what it is. Can you tell me something about the baby's father? Not much. Dana's pretty mysterious about him. What's his name? You better ask Dana that. How can I ask her anything if she's not going to talk to me? I'm sorry, but it's really not my place to tell you. Can you tell me she's living with a guy? <sighs> yeah. Which means we probably won't be seeing much of her either. He doesn't like us very much. I see. How do you feel about the baby? He didn't want it. He didn't want it. You wouldn't happen to know why Dana's miscarriage happened to be drug-induced, would you? You're not accusing me of having anything well, to do with that. Well, it seemed very odd that you and Sandy wanted her out of the hospital awfully quickly. We wanted to get her back to our place before her boyfriend decided to it's show up and take her home. boyfriend the reason why you seem almost relieved that she had a miscarriage? She doesn't need another tie to this guy. Is your concern strong enough to make her take a drug that would induce Dr. a miscarriage? Dr. Bauer, this conversation is over. I want to know the truth. You want to know the truth? Find Dana and ask her about her boyfriend. If anybody slipped her a drug, it was him. I think it's time for you to leave. I will. Just as soon as I'm finished shopping. What are you looking for? A present. Male or female? Female. Definitely female. Dylan, is this for Samantha? Don't you even think about it. What, you don't want your friends to get presents? No, I don't want her to get stomped on by you. She doesn't need to get hurt. She won't understand. She's so innocent. I want to go out with the girl, not hurt her. You still don't get it. Sam gets hurt by things that I don't even notice. And she doesn't deserve this. You're going to hurt her just being you. She's, you know, you all treat her like she's a piece of glass. No wonder she likes me. I mean it, Dylan. Harley, don't you guess dare what? You... Mike and Philip just got... Married. And it didn't just happen that once, either. She's been crying in her sleep a lot, you know. Uh, for a few weeks now, at, le at least a month, certainly, before the wedding. And, and when I ask her about it, she tells me that she's having a bad dream. <laughs> she tells me that she had a dream that uh, we were poor and she had to sell vacuum cleaners for a living or something. I don't know. She makes a joke out of it. Does this happen every night? No, no, of course not. But it is happening more and more. You see, before the wedding, I, uh, I thought it was because she didn't feel safe. I thought that the most important thing to her was um, knowing that we were meant to be together. And until that happened, things just wouldn't be right. But it's still going on, and, uh, and it's killing me almost as much as it's killing her. You see, she doesn't even know that it's happening. She's not even aware of it. She doesn't remember anything. She wakes up in the morning and she's all smiles and everything's all right with the world. But I can see it in her face. There's this um, pain there that is so deep that she just doesn't seem to want to admit to herself even how much it hurts. And I think this thing at night is just a, her way of leaking that pain out to relieve some of the pressure. What do you think that we can do for her, Sarah? Well, honey, I, I don't know what I can do. Well, I do. 
You can tell me. I know that you know you know everything, sir. And you may have even made a promise to her that you wouldn't talk to me about it, but I'm asking you for her sake this one time, please. Break that promise. I want to help her. And she's not going to be truly happy until this thing is dealt with and gone. has been Guiding Light.